Hi everyone, this is Fisty, and in this video, I'm going to share brief background stories of each character's accessories, pets, and some map details from Identity 5 and Junji Ito crossover. These are what I'm going to cover in this video. Let's start with the character first, because some items or map details are related to the characters I'm going to discuss. Number 1, Tomie. The Dream Witch got two different epic skins from this crossover. One named Picture Woman, with the description, she's beautiful and charming, but after she was possessed, she became something else. And the other named Tomie Kawakami, with the description, a pretty arrogant girl with infinite multiplication ability and demonic powers. But did you know that both are actually based on one of Junji Ito's famous character Tomie from several different stories? I'll start with the basic information. <laughs> Tomie is a being who has the power to regenerate from any of her body parts, such as limbs, hair, or even blood, into multiple clones of herself. Anybody who got organ or blood transplant from her will gradually become another Tomie. She's depicted as an extremely beautiful woman who can charm and manipulate any man to go crazy about her and makes them willing to do anything for her own selfish desires. She has another condition though, anyone who's been charmed will have the urge to kill her. Now let's get into the skins by chronological order. The first one is Dream Witch central body skin Tomie Kawakami. She's Junji Ito's first Tomie story. In this story, Tomie is popular due to her beauty, but most of her classmates dislike her. Despite having a boyfriend, she sleeps with her married teacher, Takagi, and is known as a selfish and stuck-up girl. During a class trip, she flirted and blackmailed her teacher, got into an argument with her boyfriend, and fell off a cliff. Her boyfriend wants to turn himself in, but the teacher and her classmates disagreed, saying that she deserves it. And so, the whole class conspired to mutilate her body into 42 pieces, one piece for each student, and dumped the pieces separately. After the funeral, Tomi appeared in the class, freaking everyone out. Yanagi-sensei becomes mad and later got admitted to a mental hospital. And her best friend, who moved out of town, found another deformed Tomi ashore, near a wrapping that she used to wrap Tomi's meat. The second one is Dream Witch Follower Skin, Tomie Kawakami. Now this one is kind of a long story. In a different school, there's a student in photographic club, Tsukiko, who got a request from her crush, Yamazaki, to get the photograph of Tomie, a popular transfer student. Tsukiko is jealous, but she does it anyway. Tomie knows and poses for the camera, saying you can take a thousand of them, then you can scatter them across the school. But the developed photos turn disturbing and so Tsukiko spreads them all. Tomie, who thought her photos would be normal, got furious and ordered her fans to kill her, including Yamazaki. But Tsukiko managed to get away. One day, Tomie visits Tsukiko's house with her bodyguards. Tsukiko pisses her off by saying that she is a monster, and suddenly a second deformed head can be seen on Tomie's back head. Tomie tells her followers to cut the tumor off, and they do. They chopped her head off. The head and the tumor are still alive though, and the guy lives with it. At night, the rest of her body moves, going to her own home with a new half-growing head. Other incidents then occurs due to Tomie's bloodstains left on the carpet, but that's another story. Weeks or months later, Tomie's body, who has grown a head, wants to take a revenge on Tsukiko and lures them by saying that Yamazaki, who is currently missing, is in her house. It's a lie, of course. There, Tsukiko met Tomie's father finds out that they're doing research about Tomie's multiplication ability and he wants to do experiments on Tsukiko. Tsukiko runs away and while being chased, she finds an old man in a cage who's actually the real master of the house and he tells Tsukiko about his story, which brings us to the next skin. Dream Witch Central Body Skin, Picture Woman The old man says that one day during a stormy night, a woman named Tomie and a man named Takagi, the teacher from the previous story who escaped the mental hospital, asked for a shelter. The old man and his daughter welcomed them, but then Tommy and Takagi hijacked the house, captured the old man and his daughter, and did horrible experiments regarding Tomia's regenerative ability on her poor daughter. The skin is the result of that. When the creature gets out of the room, she, uh, or they, killed Tomia's follower and choked Takagi as well. The ending is blurry because in Tsukiko's frenzy trying to survive, she blacked out and by the time the police come, the house is already empty. Now this skin has two lines.
You can see that the central body is the one saying this, but originally these lines are not from her, but from her. Dream Witch's Follower Skin, Picture Woman This one has a different story. There's this one painter who meets Tomie at his art exhibition. She tells him that his model's not good enough. After that, Tomie interferes his painting session and makes the model rage quit. Tomie asks the painter to paint her instead, saying that she wants her beauty to be permanently captured. So the man paints her. His work was not satisfactory for Tomie, which leaves him in despair and he becomes obsessed in capturing her real beauty. Long story short, he finds a disturbing photograph of her and finds another artist in the same metal state and finally finishes his masterpiece. Tomie is angry at the result and the painter kills her instead. Tomie still has a lot of other stories, mostly about her manipulating other people and got killed and multiplied instead. You know how the skin pushes her follower to the ground? It's because when there are several Tomies residing in one area, they got competitive and manipulate their fans to kill the other Tomies. Another trivia, when a Tomie regenerates from a wound or something, the Tomie becomes unable to grow up, making her forever young. And now that I've covered this scary woman, let's move on to the next character. Number 2, Soichi and his voodoo doll accessory. This is Lucky Guy's limited skin, Soichi. His birthday is actually May 3rd. When cursing others, it is often those that curse themselves who suffer. So Soichi is basically a creep who lives in a normal family. His grandma made a prediction that a demon twin will be born on 6 July at 6 pm. The date is way off, but he may actually has a ghost little brother. He chews on nails because he has iron deficiency, but he likes to spit those nails to hurt or prank others. He plays with dangerous black magics such as voodoo, necromancy, curses, and so on, usually for pranks and petty revenge. Despite that, he's still only an 11 years old kid, so his pranks usually come back at him. So he's also the comedic relief in Junji Ito's horror parade. This animation where he jumps from a spider is a reference to when he scares his cousin, Michina, with a dead spider, but when the spider landed on his cheeks, he shrieks. So yeah, he's actually afraid of him. Now Lucky Guy has a special accessory for him in the game, which is this voodoo doll. Perhaps it would be wise to practice caution when performing pranks with this item. Who knows what might happen. This particular doll appears as one of Soichi's voodoo dolls. In this anime episode or manga chapter, he uses this doll to prank his classmate feeding them on a tree in a forest, making the landowner furious about his damaged trees. The owner swears to find the culprit and kill them, planting traps all over the area. One night, he was carrying his classmate in the forest using a tall spider costume, when he got caught in a trap and got stuck on a tree instead. The landowner finds him, about to kill him, but he got rescued by his big brother in time. Number 3. Intersection Bishonen This is Wu Chang's limited Junji Iro skin, the Intersection Bishonen. Have you ever encountered them at a foggy crossroads? They also appear in every sleeping town's residential area. The story goes like this. In one town, there's a funny custom to do fortune telling. There's to ask someone who passes an intersection a question you want to ask and you'll get your fortune told by the stranger. There's also an urban legend of a tall, pretty guy wearing all black and a pair of earrings called Intersections Pretty Boy, which is Wu Chang's dark guard skin in the game, who only appears in the fortune telling streets when it's foggy, telling people bad fortunes. Those who are told bad fortunes will kill themselves on the spot, and those who are given advice will blindly follow them until it takes a toll in their life. After that, whenever a fog is thick in the area, the spirits of suicide victims reappear and ask for fortune telling. He became very popular with the girls in the town due to his handsome look. The protagonist of the story, Fukuda Ryusuke, had a traumatic experience 10 years prior before the black clothed guy exists. When he was a kid, a woman asked him about her love affair and he denied her. The woman killed herself and he feels tremendous guilt for years. At the time, the woman had a 6-year-old son who disappeared after her suicide. That missing boy comes to this town after Ryusuke came back to get a revenge on him and on the town's fortune telling custom as well, and became the intersection's pretty boy. After a few incidents with his friends, Ryusuke starts to lose weight, swearing to catch the intersection's pretty boy and being obsessed in helping other people's fortune. Other rumors start to emerge that the real identity of the urban legend is actually Ryusuke, 
discuss him his privacy due to the huge amount of the intersection's pretty boys fangirls at the time. One night, while wearing white clothes, Ryu sketches after the intersection's pretty boy to kill him and stop him causing suicides but gets drawn by the fangirl spirits instead. Later on, a new urban legend emerges. A tall pretty guy in white starts appearing at the crossroad, giving good fortunes and telling people to help entering a hundred fortune askers at the crossroad. His existence reduces the madness caused by the guy wearing all black and he's called the white clothed pretty boy and he is Wu Chang's white guard skin. Okay, now that we have covered all the character skin along with the related things in the game, let's move on to the pet accessory and map details that we haven't covered. Number 4, Jean Pierre. Jean Pierre is released as a rival's pet in the game, a strange puppet that seems to have its own consciousness. So what is he? He's basically a puppet who controls others like marionettes and kill those he has grudges on. In the story, he is a possession of a puppeteer family. The big brother runs away from the family because he wants to break free from all this puppet business. Several years later, the younger brother visits his big brother's house for the first time and the one who welcomes him is Jean Pierre. His older brother and his family are being controlled with a string, saying that they hire puppet controllers who are in the ceiling. Now, this younger brother has a girlfriend from his elementary school who has met Jean Pierre before and tossed him away, saying the puppet is creepy. When his girlfriend gets into the puppet's house, all of a sudden all our puppets went crazy and she got killed. The younger brother breaks Jean Pierre and all these weird activities stop, and he saw his brother and his family has turned into puppets. Number 5, Star Eyeball. This is a new limited accessory during the crossover period, a strange eyeball-shaped plant. It is said that the resentful soul of a samurai is attached to it. This weird thing is just a random supernatural plant found in the story, really. Its backstory is unknown and it's also a lie that this plant contains the soul of a samurai because the one who claims it in the story faked his own power. The story is about a transfer student who is very fascinated with weird supernatural phenomena. He joined the occult club and ever since he transferred in, a lot of strange new things have been popping out including this plant. The other member pretends to see a samurai spirit in the plant. Long story short, after he moved to other town, the town becomes normal again. Number 6. Blood bushes. I think one of the prettiest view in the map is these trees with red fruits on it. This tree is actually a blood tree. There was a vampire who came into a village. He has the power to make people turn into a blood tree. The only way to avoid completely dying is by eating your own blood fruit. But this results in you becoming bloodthirsty maniac. Number 7. Faces on the grave. Many of you may have noticed tombstones with faces and green light in every sleeping town. This one may refer to one of Junji Ito's short story in another series, Mimi no Kaidan, titled Grave Man. These graves have spirits dwelling in them because the area is a burial plot for uncremated bodies. In the story, this macho man turns all the graves direction to face his window because he loves all the attention. And that's all the backstories I can share. As you know, the map Ever Sleeping Town has a lot of marvelous details like this dancer, this shadow, these hands, this peeping girl, and so on. But I believe these are little details that Nadis adds. This dancer and the shadow are both the hunter geisha. This peeping girl is dream witch follower. I also don't see any husbands that are related with Tomie or other Junji Ito's character. And regarding this little buddy, it's very unique that I thought he was from one of Junji Ito's stories, but I really couldn't find anything that resembles him. My friend suggested that he may be one of the random puppets from Jean Pierre's story, or maybe one of Soichi's voodoo doll. I've also found two stories that involves a rare accident, but they're a little different and doesn't involve the body split into two. If any of you know something about this little guy, please comment below. And don't forget to give likes, comments, and subscribe. Thank you all for watching!